Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. Our history in this video begins in the year 1453. And this icon, this Eastern icon, we have the image of the Emperor Constantine the 11th, Paleo Logos. And he was the last ruler of the Byzantine Empire. The Byzantine Empire was really known as the Eastern Roman Empire. And this is the last days of one of the greatest Christian cities in Eastern Europe. The fall or conquest of Constantinople. The destruction of the greatest Byzantine stronghold was by the Ottoman Turks. And this happened under the rulership, under the Ottoman Sultan Medmen the second. As history attests, the Sultan and the Ottomans destroyed the Byzantine Empire. In the lands of the Byzantine Empire, and its people became incorporated into the Ottoman Empire. So 374 years later, the Greek people who were incorporated into the Ottoman Empire struggled to shake off slavery and subjection from the Ottoman Empire. The Greek War of Independence. The Greek War of Independence, also known as the Greek Revolution, or the Greek Revolution of 1821, was a successful war of independence by Greek revolutionaries against the Ottoman Empire between 1821 and 1829. In 1826, the Greeks were assisted by the British Empire, the Kingdom of France, and the Russian Empire, while the Ottomans were aided by their North African vassals, particularly the islet Egypt. The war led to the formation of modern Greece, which would be expanded to its modern size in later years. The revolution is celebrated by Greeks around the world as Independence Day on 25th of March every year. All Greek territory except the Ionian Islands, the Manai Peninsula, and some mountainous regions of Epirus came under Ottoman rule in the 5th century in the decades surrounding the fall of Constantinople. During the following centuries, there were many Greek uprisings against Ottoman rule. The Ottoman Turks held the Eastern Romans under slavery 
Western Romans initiated a plan to free their captive brothers from Muslim. And here we have a map of the Ottoman Empire. In Greece, is fully incorporated into the Ottoman Empire. And on the map, it shows important events of the first year of the Greek War of Independence from January 18, 21 to March 18, 22 where the Greeks were struggling and fighting to free themselves from the Ottoman Empire. And some other curious events were happening in this time period in Greece that had a deep impact on the lives of enslaved peoples in the Americas. And that is because in Greece, a black American by the name of James Jacob Williams was liberating the Greek slaves in 1827. The two most important personalities in this story is a man and a woman. The man is named James Jacob Williams. He's a black American. And the woman? And the woman was a Greek slave by the name of Garafila Mahalbi. Gara Phila Mohalbi Gara Philia Mohalbi was born in the year 1817 and died March 17, 1830 and she was a Greek slave that was rescued by an American merchant and sent to live with his family in Boston, Massachusetts. Born to a prominent family on the island of Pasara, her parents were killed in the year 1824 during the destruction of Pasara by the Turks. She arrived in Boston around the same period, Samuel Gridley Howell, brought John Celebrigos, Zakos, and Christophoros, Plato, Castanis, and other Greek refugees. She died at age 13. After her death, she became a popular celebrity in the media and among abolitionists. Mohalbi and her sisters were kidnapped and sold into slavery at the age of 10. She was working as a slave to a Turkish family in Smyrna. 
At a bazaar in Smyrna, she met American merchant, Mr. Langdon, and begged him to rescue her from bondage. He purchased her from the family. He adopted her as his daughter. He arranged for Gavrophilia to sail to Boston, where she would live with his family. Her sisters were also freed from slavery and sent to live in Europe. She died of tuberculosis on March 17, 1830, at the age of 13. After her death, Garofilia Mojave became well known in the media in Boston, New England, and eventually the entire world. American painter and miniaturist Anne Hall created a miniature portrait of the Greek slave girl. The popularity of the Greek slave story was circulating throughout the United States. Prominent American sculptor Hiram Powers traveled to Europe to see the slave trade. While in Florence, he began to sculpt the popular sculpture, The Greek Slave. Many other artists adapted the subject matter which inspired the slave market, the Jerome painting, the slave market, the Bollinger painting, and the slave market, Otto Pliny, in the latter part of the 19th century. These paintings were inspired by the slave markets of Europe. The slave market, Jean Leon Jerome, 1866. And the slave market by painter Otto Pliny in the year 1910. John Absalom, the Greek slave, on view in the east nave of the Great Exhibition in the Crystal Palace, London, 1851, hand-colored lithograph, published by Lloyd Brothers and Company, 1851, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It is also not known that the Greek Revolution formed the basis and the Greek slaves became the symbols of the struggle for the abolition of slavery in the USA. The Greek fever experienced by the United States in the 1820s and the contribution of American Phil Hellenism or love of Greeks to the Greek Revolution 
have already been highlighted. What is less known is that the struggle of the Greeks was also supported by the African American community and that an African American fought bravely on the side of the Greeks. And now this history brings us to the main character of this history, James Jacob Williams. James Jacob Williams, born in the year 1785 to 1800. It's not exactly sure when he was born, but it was in between those years. And he died 1829. He was an African American runaway slave and soldier. He took part in in the Second Barbary War as a member of the U.S. Navy and later alongside the Greek revolutionaries during the Greek War of Independence. Williams was severely injured fighting for the Greek cause and was discovered by American abolitionist and Phil Helene Jonathan Peckham Miller. Miller brought Williams to his home in Poros, where he properly recovered and lived out the rest of his life as a free man in Greece. Williams' Early Life Williams was born on a plantation in Baltimore, Maryland. He was a slave during his early life and he managed to escape and hide on the American warship, the USS Guerriere, when it was part of the Delaware flotilla. During the War of 1812, the ship was actively participating in battles near Baltimore. Around 1815, the USS Guerriere was under the command of Stephen Decatur and was part of the Mediterranean Squadron. Williams was discovered on the American warship and he eventually participated in several battles as a sharp shooting marine taking part in the second Barbary War in the Battle of Cape Gata and the Battle of Cape Palos alongside Stephen Decatur. The Battle of Aitia in the year 1827. James Jacob Williams, participation in the Greek War of Independence. Due to the lack of military personnel, Williams volunteered to assist in the Greek cause. He joined a small squadron consisting of a brig and two small gunboats led by the flagship Carteria, commanded by Hastings. The Carteria was the first steamship involved in combat. Williams participated in the Battle of Aitia 
which took place in the Gulf of Corinth, formerly known as the Gulf of Lepanto, around September 1827. Consequently, he was seriously injured by a cannon fire, breaking his arms and legs in the process. He was eventually discovered in a hospital by American abolitionist and Phil Helene, Jonathan Pickham Miller, and brought to his home in Poros to recover. Miller wrote about the brave African American in his journal. Jonathan Miller wrote about the brave African American in his journal. A brave American Negro, December 21st, took James Williams, a black man from Baltimore, into my house. He, having been some time in the hospital, Williams came to Greece with Lord Cochrane was cook of the Savier and conducted himself with great coolness and integrity in several engagements, particularly at the Battle of the Gulf of Lepanto, where he showed truly that he had been in the school of Stephen Decatur, from when no Greek could be found to take the helm, Williams volunteered his services and was there struck down by a splinter which broke his leg and arm. He had before contended with the Turks, for he had lost a finger before Algerius in the United States service under Stephen Decatur. Being destitute of clothing, I provided him with a double suit. Williams lived out the rest of his life in Greece. His tombstone is at the cemetery of Igos, Ionis, and Argos. Williams had been honored by countless Greek organizations, including the Society for Hellenism and Phil Hellenism. The impact that the Greek Revolution had arises from the articles published by the first newspaper of emancipated black Americans in the United States, the Freedom's Journal. Published since March 1827 in New York, that newspaper, interested mainly in the anti-slavery movement, saw in the Greek Revolution a struggle of slaves against oppressive masters it attached in the news from Greece an importance comparable to the news from Haiti, Africa, and the West Indies. On December 21st, 1827, the Freedom's Journal published with great satisfaction the news on the naval battle of Navarano. This is a word of note for those who have watched this channel. Israelites fought in all walls, on all sides. So just as James Jacob Williams fought for Greek independence, you had Israelites fighting for the Turks against Greek independence. There is a lot more to so-called black American history than the average person could ever guess. You would have to include Latinos, 
and Native Americans because they play an integral part in the genetic makeup of so-called blacks of the Americas not to mention the black Europeans like the black Irish element this man is John S. Romanides a Roman theologian and Greek Orthodox priest born 1927 and died 2001 and he was one of the most influential Greek Orthodox theologians of the 20th century and John Romanides held a deeper understanding behind the meaning and the causes of the Greek War of Independence. Indications of a plan for a Roman Revolution which became Hellenic or Greek. As the French Revolution was in its infant stages, the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, the book by Edward Gibbons, was being translated by a subinum of King Louis himself into French. This history became very popular, not only because the middle class knew that they, the villains and the serfs, were descendants of the Gallo-Romans, and they were not Franks, but Gallo-Romans, they were Romans but also because the so-called Greek Empire in the East, which had fallen to the Ottoman Turks, never existed since it was the same Roman Empire composed of Romans like themselves. It was no accident that a secret organization was established to promote a Roman revolution within the Ottoman Empire as part of the Gallo-Roman revolution underway in France. The middle class discovered they were Romans, so they overthrew the ruling class of France who were not Romans, but Franks, and they were Israelites. Unfortunately, the coordination between this secret East Roman revolutionary organization and the French government fell to the lot of Napoleon, who had taken over the command of the French army of Italy at war with the Austrian Empire. If I can explain John Romanides' statement, Kings ruled Europe before the French Revolution and before Napoleon, the Kingdom of France, the Kingdom of Spain, and so on. The bourgeoisie, or the middle class, democratic revolutions, were determined to overthrow the existing order in Europe, get rid of the kings, and replace the elite feudal aristocracy and nobility the feudal aristocracy to replace them with the feudal middle class it's the new elites here's an icon of Constantine the Great and his mother Alina and to the right, an icon of Constantine the Eleven, Paleo Logos, the last Byzantine Empire emperor. Wow, Constantine could be considered the first. The ruling elites were Israelites. And this is a picture 
of the Roman elites. The old Roman elites were replaced with the Israelite ruling class during the Dark or Middle Ages. The Roman citizens of all social classes who reaped the benefits of the Roman Empire, who lived in Italy or in one of the colonies of the Roman Empire, who lived of the glory of its conquest, suffered the severest penalty of slavery from the hands of Rome's most bitterest enemies. The Romans had colonies in Spain, in France, Germany, Britain, Libya, Egypt, Syria, Turkey, Cyprus, Greece, or any city of its huge empire. The average Roman fell victim to its policy of empire building and became a slave a serf. The Dark Ages for the Romans, the German feudal baron or the Muslim sheik played the cruelest game on their Roman captives. In order to make sure that their Roman captives would never rise again, they wiped the history from the serfs. Those lowly peasants would never be taught their past history. As masters of the Roman Empire, they lived in a dark time, a dark age of ignorance of their past glories. Brother against brother, the War of the Roses. The Israelites took a empire, the Roman Empire, from the Romans and became the rulers of Europe but they couldn't hold with a tight grip their positions of power. In time, because of unchristlike behavior, they failed to hold onto their biblical-based principles and brother fought brother. Their greatest error was their failure to keep the secret history of their servants hidden. When the Byzantine fell, the elites fled to the West and with their archives. This information was used to spark a new renaissance of Roman culture and customs in the West. Everything changed once the bourgeoisie rediscovered they were the descendants and inheritors of the Romans, lands and past glories. No longer would they be content to subjugation of peoples who they once ruled. They thought to be free and rebuild the Roman Empire. But this time it will be worldwide. Their first plan of action was to free all the serfs, Romans, in the kingdom of France. Afterwards, they would free all the serfs, Romans, in all of the kingdoms of Europe including the ones that lived in the Ottoman Empire. The Greek Revolution was part of that plan. Once France was free, the plan was to free all the serfs and create equality among the social classes of the kingdoms of Europe. Destroy aristocratic privilege in Europe and to change the status quo and turn former subjects into citizens. But Napoleon screwed it up. A map of Napoleon's Europe. The Greek Revolution. The Western Europeans found out they were actually Romans and not Germanic conquerors. They envisioned a reborn Roman Empire. Their first plan of actions was to destroy all the kingdoms in Europe that destroyed 
the Roman Empire and to change the status quo of Europeans from subjects and slaves of kings to citizens and free men with human and civil rights. <laughs>